In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a Panopto recording using the Panopto desktop application. You can easily launch and automatically log in to Panopto using your Blackboard modules. After accessing a Blackboard module, click Panopto on the left hand side and then click on the create button at the top of the screen. This will reveal a menu with a range of options. The first option should be Panopto for Windows or Panopto for Mac, depending on the computer that you're using. If I select Panopto for Windows, it will give me the option to launch Panopto, which I'm going to click. And then I'll click open. The Panopto desktop recorder has now automatically opened and signed me in. You'll notice that the folder for the module where I clicked create has already been selected. Of course I can change this if I don't want to record to this folder. Simply clicking on the drop down menu will reveal all the modules that I'm enrolled on as an instructor. I can then begin typing either the module name or the module code to filter the search and find the module that I'm looking for. I can select a module from the list and I have now told Panopto that this is the folder I want to record to. Next, I can edit the recording name. By default, it will be today's date and time. I can simply select all, backspace, and enter a new name by typing into the box. This is the name that will be given to the recording, but don't worry, you can change it as much as needed in the future. Once we are happy with our folder selection and recording name, we have two menus that we need to configure primary sources and secondary sources. Firstly, we need to configure our primary sources. That is how we tell Panopto what audio and video should be captured. Now this video guide will be relevant whether you're recording at home, in your office, or in a teaching space across campus. Though the specific options that appear in the drop-down boxes will vary. Firstly, I can tell Panopto whether I'm recording my webcam. To do this, I'll click on the video drop-down and choose the relevant option. In my example, I have both an internal and an external webcam that's connected by a USB. If I want to record my video, I just need to click on one of these options. In this example, I'm not going to capture my video, so I'll leave this as none. Next, I can configure which microphone Panopto should be recording. So again, I'll click on the drop down box and it will reveal the options available to me. In my example, I have a microphone in each webcam and my headphones that are connected to my laptop. Different microphones will have different levels of quality, so you'll want to pick the microphone that has the best quality for your recording. If you're recording on campus, you'll find multiple options in this drop-down menu. Normally, the correct option should be selected. However, if you find that you are unable to capture sound in your Panopto recording, we recommend that you contact the AV team within ICT. You can do this by emailing ict at lincoln.ac.uk or by calling the service help desk. I'll show you how to check if audio is recording before you click record in just a moment. Now I'm happy with the default selection, which is the microphone in my external webcam. So I'm going to leave this as selected. Finally, I can choose whether to capture computer audio. This is audio that comes from applications such as your web browser, or perhaps a video that you have saved on your computer. Please note, this also includes sounds from new incoming emails or a Teams message. So only tick this box if you need to capture computer audio and make sure you close any applications that you're not using. Before we move on to secondary sources, I want to point out the monitor at the top of this page. You'll see a set of green, yellow and red boxes, as well as a scroll bar. As I speak, you'll notice that the green boxes light up and it allows me to understand whether or not Panopto is receiving an audio input from my microphone. As you speak, you should see the boxes light up and when you remain silent, you should see that no boxes are lit. If you were speaking into the microphone, whether that's a microphone on the lectern, in your headphones, or a handheld mic, and you do not see the boxes lighting up, this means that Panopto is not capturing your audio. There are a range of reasons for this, and so you should perform some general troubleshooting. Is the microphone turned on? Is there a mute switch on the microphone itself? If I'm in a space on campus, is there a control panel with specific mute buttons for each microphone? Do I need to adjust the sensitivity on the control panel? Have I selected the wrong microphone from the audio drop-down box? If you find that when you are speaking, the monitor is hitting the yellow or red boxes, you may want to decrease the sensitivity. You can do this by dragging the scroll bar using your mouse. 
This will adjust the sensitivity. Ideally, you want your microphone to be capturing within the green bars. Of course, if time allows, it's always best to do a test recording. Secondary Sources allows you to tell Panopto what content you are capturing in addition to your webcam and microphone. In this video, we're just going to focus on either capturing a PowerPoint or one of your desktop screens. If you're delivering a lecture that's just PowerPoint from start to end, you can choose Capture PowerPoint from the Secondary Sources list. I can then untick Capture Main Screen as it's not needed. I already have PowerPoint open with the presentation I'm going to deliver, so I can tick the box that says Start Presenting when Recording Starts. This setup is great for when you're just recording a presentation. However, if your PowerPoint includes interactive elements, such as on-screen annotation, embedded Poll Everywhere activities, or videos, then I recommend you use the screen recording setup that I'm about to show you. This time, I'm going to change my secondary sources not to capture PowerPoint, but to capture my main screen. Now, if you're recording on campus, or maybe at home, you may only have one screen, that might be the screen on your laptop or the screen that is connected to your desktop PC. In my example, I have both a main screen and a second screen because my laptop is connected to a monitor. If you're ever not sure which screen is your main screen, there's an enable screen capture preview button. Selecting this will show you which screen you have currently selected in secondary sources. So I'll click this. And as you can see, my main screen is the screen you are looking at now. It's the one with the Panopto desktop recorder open. This tells me that when I click record, I need to ensure that any content I want to be shown in my recording is on this screen and not the other screen. If in the specific recording scenario, you are going to be using both screens, you can choose to capture both at the same time. For example, you might have a PowerPoint on one screen and as an application specific to your discipline on another. To capture both at the same time, I can simply tick both boxes. You can now see on the other screen, I have a slightly different version of Panopto, Panopto in the web, which is recording the video you're watching now. If you do use this setup, please note that students can freely switch between the main screen and the second screen in the recording. For now, I'm just going to leave main screen selected. Once I'm happy with the primary sources and secondary sources that I have selected, all I need to do is click record. When I click record, the Panopto desktop application will minimize and then I can deliver my session as required. So I'll click record and now Panopto is recording. When I'm ready to stop my recording, I can click Panopto in the toolbar at the bottom of the screen to reveal the desktop recorder. I can then click stop to finish my recording. Importantly, I have the opportunity to rename my recording if I haven't already done so. And then I can click done to ensure that my video uploads to Panopto. If I've made a mistake or don't wish to keep this recording, I can delete it and record again. When I click done, the video will take a few seconds to upload and then it will be available on your Blackboard module for students to access. So I'll click done and this will take me to the manage recordings page where I can see the upload progress. Once your video shows in your uploaded recordings list, this is how you know it has been uploaded to your module. The video will now process and then it will be available to students.